Today on VLAMP, we're talking about a kid's guide to getting started in the entertainment industry. Welcome everyone to VLAMP, video, lighting, audio, music, and photography how-to show. I'm, of course, your host, Matt Haslam, and today we're talking about something that's very near and dear to my heart, and that is trying to help kids get started in the entertainment industry, trying to get their foot in the door, basically. And for those of you who don't know, I started in this industry when I was just 9 or 10 years old, and it's an industry that is amazing at some points, but brutal in other ways. And as a kid, I think it was definitely hard for me to get started because there was no one there to say, you know, do this or don't do that. There was no one there to say, you know, don't buy this piece of crappy equipment because there's this other thing that's out here that's $20 more and much, much better if you just wait a week or two and save up a little bit more. And no one was there. I had family and friends who knew very little about this industry, but no real mentors when I first initially got started. And that's kind of why I started the whole uh, MH News and VLAMP show here, because I wanted to do my part to give back and try to help those along. Uh, And I'm not saying I know everything and anything about anything in the entertainment industry. I'm saying no one can. No one can possibly know everything there is to know. But we can do our part to maybe help those along that haven't been in the industry as long as we have. And that's what this show is all about. And so we're finally getting to this topic in season five. And I love, love this topic. Um, but when I, I when I originally started, this was something where... I had to learn the hard way and I was a nine or 10 year old kid trying to perform my guitar with my guitar anywhere and just everywhere I could. And sometimes, yes, that meant I was performing for very little or I was performing for nothing in return, but it it gave me that foot in the door. And, you know, really my dream was always to entertain. I knew very early on when I was nine years old that this is what I want to do with my life. I want to entertain people. I want to be part of this industry. And, you know, some out there might say that my dream has changed over the years. I I don't think it's changed. I think it's evolved. I still entertain people. What I do is still entertainment industry, but it's just evolved into different branches and different things. I still perform and I still love performing, but I think it's evolved into doing different facets of the industry that I never imagined myself doing when I originally first started. Um, And and that's okay to have your dream evolve like that. I think it's perfectly fine. But that's why today's episode is a kid's guide to getting started. Because I know there's a lot of kids out there who may not know what they want to do one day. But I know for a fact that there's kids who do know what they want to do. They know they want to do something in this industry but they don't have any clue as to how, right? I'll tell you this little short story. Recently, we were working on a project at a local Actors Guild. It's um, actually the Actors Guild of Schuylkill County. And they did something incredible this year. I mean, they do an incredible show every year, um, a, a musical for kids, and as a junior version of a musical just to have kids get that experience to go up on stage and perform. And yes, it's in front of family and friends, um, but it's an event that, you know, gets these kids to go on stage and get that experience speaking in front of a crowd, right? I don't care where you go in life. That's a skill you're going to need. And, And someone pointed it out to me a while ago that, Really, public speaking is so important in so many different ways that you don't have any idea of, right? And 
you know, whether you're just going for a regular job one day, you're going to need public speaking to get, get into an interview room and talk about yourself and talk about your skills in front of someone. You need public speaking skills that way. If you're in an office setting, you might need to talk about a presentation one day in front of, you know, your biggest client or something. Uh, you might need to be an entertainer. I mean, it doesn't matter where you go in life, you're going to need public speaking. And that's the number one fear people have. Um, uh, basically, when I was uh, maybe 15 or 16, I started talking in, in front of people and I started saying to them, number one fear of people is public speaking. The number two fear is death. So people would literally rather die than talk in front of people, which is insane to me. But... Um, public speaking is a big fear, and something that going on stage helps with is conquering that fear. And so while everyone that's a, involved with little clubs like this and little groups like drama clubs and Actors Guild clubs across wherever you are, uh, across the country, across the world, they help with that fear. And they help with public speaking skills and how to just conquer it. But this year especially this little club did something incredible. They let one person from their cast who knew they wanted to be in the entertainment industry, but one member of the cast this year, instead of being a part of the cast, asked if she can be a part of the crew. Asked and, and, and said, you know, I, I like performing, but... I really want to know what it's like behind the scenes. I want to be involved with the lighting crew, the sound crew. I want to know what that's like. I want to learn all the facets to this industry. What makes this show a show? What makes this show successful? I want to know that. I don't want to just be on stage another year in a row, right? And we've been involved with this show for a couple of years now, filming the entire event for them, and it's wonderful. But this year I saw something incredible happen and they allowed this one wonderful person, this wonderful kid to go behind the scenes and help with the lighting crew and the sound crew. And I think that's something not a, people, not a lot of people realize the depth to what that one kid will learn doing that. And here's today's main point. The biggest piece of advice I can give to anyone starting out in the industry, whether you're five years old or if you're 50, if you just are getting started in this industry, diversify yourself. Don't just narrow down your path way too soon. When I originally started, I said to myself, I want to perform. I want to entertain. I want to be a singer on stage. I didn't really know I want to be a, a songwriter yet, but that's something that pretty much evolved within a month or two of starting. But, um, cause I just started writing songs and I was just like, well, this is fun, you know, but as my career went on, I started to realize, you know, performing isn't everything I can do. I can be a backstage crew member. I can do lighting. I can do sound. I, I want to learn everything. And I think it's important to learn everything. One of the biggest problems that you as a kid or uh, an adult you're going to see in this industry is ego. You're going to see a lot of a lot of egos in the entertainment industry in general. Um, mostly you're going to see it in a performing world or acting world, but um, you still have egos in lighting and sound and video world and, you know, all these different facets, you have egos. Unfortunately, you have egos, by the way. And I think learning multiple facets, if you if you learn every position there is on set, or if you learn every position there is during a stage show, before you get on stage, I think you then have an appreciation for everyone else there. Put it this way. If you know how hard it is to run a soundboard, to run a lighting board, 
if you know how hard it is to uh, get things on and off stage quickly during a show, during a scene change, and your director's telling you this scene change should take no more than 30 seconds and there's 50 pieces of uh, set to move, well, then you realize how hard it is to work that position. And so when you become an actor, suddenly you don't put yourself ahead of that sound engineer or that lighting engineer or that stage crew person. You don't put yourself above that cameraman. You know, you, you, No matter where you go or what uh, position you're filling that day, you don't put yourself above anyone else. And that's something crucial to learn. I freely admit when I f first started in this industry, um, I was a kid and I unfortunately learned what it's like to be on the road and what it's like to have this crazy lifestyle before I learned how to be humble. I learned in an opposite way of what you should. And so one crucial piece of advice I try to point out anytime I can is that you should learn how to be humble first. So learn all these other positions before you go on stage, before you get in front of a camera, learn what it's like to be behind the camera. And that's where this little club did something incredible. They let one person this year who genuinely wanted to do something different than act on stage they let them come behind the scenes and help out, learn what it was like to learn what it's like to be behind a lighting board or a soundboard and, you know, mic up an actor. They learned that stuff. And I think we as an industry have to allow that. We have to allow kids or people just starting out to learn those behind the scenes positions before they get in front of the camera, before they get on stage. And so part of this is just don't narrow your path too soon. Because I'm, I'm not saying I'm the perfect way to, and I, I had a perfect path going, right? I'm saying you don't know what you're going to be happy with. For instance, I started performing and really I, I still love performing, but I learned that I like being, being behind the camera more than I like being in front of it. I learned I like running a soundboard more than I actually like being on stage performing, which I would have never learned had it not been for my, honestly, had it not been for my grade school, who let certain people not just perform, but go behind the scenes and run a soundboard during the, the show. They let us do different things and uh, ex experiment with things that we might enjoy. Uh, for instance, I was a stage crew member. I, I was, you know, of my high school, I was a stage crew member of my middle school talent show. It was very different to being up there on stage performing suddenly now being dressed in all black and not being noticed at all. And your entire job is to not be noticed by the audience. And I realized that while I still love performing, I love these other things maybe even more. Maybe I should ex you know, uh, expand on this. Maybe this is something I want to do even more than perform for my entire life, you know? And I would have never realized that had I not tried it at first. And so I always say, don't narrow your path too soon. Don't just say, this is what I want to be and that's the only thing I'm going to chase. Expand on it. One day be a stage crew member, one day run a soundboard or help out with a sound crew, whatever. Try to do different things and you'll soon learn maybe... What you were meant to do is that one thing that you initially started at. Maybe you like that the most out of everything. But open your mind a little bit to everything. And maybe you'll find something you like even more. And you'll still be able to do that thing that you still love. And you loved initially. But basically don't 
assume you came to the fork in the road too soon. Really, in this industry, there is no fork in the road to say, what do you want to do with your life? No one's going to come up to you and say, this is the moment. This is the fork in the road where you have to decide, am I going to be an audio engineer or am I going to be a lighting engineer? Am I going to be a performer or am I going to be a cameraman? No one's going to say that to you. You can decide that on your own if you want to choose a certain path. But you're able to do both. You're able to do everything. Um, just look at my career as an example. I'm, again, I'm not saying I've, I have the perfect career, but I'm saying I have lighting and sound jobs all the time. I work as a cameraman for a local news station. I work as a cameraman for my own company. I perform. I do graphic design. I do all these different facets, and I'm never bored. Every day I go in this, into the office and I do something different because I'm not one of those people that can just go into the office and do the same thing every single day, day in, day out. That's boring to me. And it might be boring to you. It might be perfectly fine with you. You might like that lifestyle. You might like doing the same thing every day. Just maybe different work every day, but the same task. But maybe you're like me and you want to do something different. So expanding your horizons and opening your mind to different facets of the industry would greatly improve your lifestyle. What I'm saying is try just throwing darts at the wall and figure out what sticks. That's an expression that you may not know about yet in life because you're a, a, a kid yet, but ask your parents. It's an expression that means basically try everything and figure out what you like later, right? If you try everything and you do everything you can in the industry, soon enough you'll find one or two of those paths lead to some form of a way you can make a living off of doing that. They lead to ways you can get paid doing that, and soon enough you're getting paid to do what you love. And then we entered into this whole thing of, you know, is it a hobby or is it a career? And I think for very early on, you need to start calling it a career path. Um, a, a lot of people don't understand that there's a difference there, but I think very early on, you should be calling this a career if that's in fact what you want to do. If this is something you're just doing for fun, that's fine. Call it whatever you want. But if this is something that you're serious about, don't get stuck in the hole of calling it a hobby because it's very difficult to get out of calling it a hobby because people just assume it's a hobby then. If you tell someone it's a hobby and then you know six months later you, you're calling it a career, people will still assume that you are considering it a hobby, even if you tell them I'm considering it a career now. So I think you had to distinguish what what you want out of it. If you want to do this for your life, then call it a career. If you don't want to do it for life and this is just something you want to do for fun, then call it a hobby. But I think that needs to be distinguished. That's one mistake that I made very early on. I called it a hobby. And I, I, even back when I called it a hobby, I knew this is what I wanted to do with my life, but I called it a hobby anyway for a, a little while. And people just assume then it was a hobby and they didn't compensate me for certain things because they thought it was a hobby. They didn't think that I was a professional because I called it a hobby and it was very difficult to get out of that. And, and so that's why I'm saying a big piece of advice is realize what it is early on. Um, honestly, another thing you can do in this industry is observe others. You don't always have to be involved with everything. Just observe. Um, for instance, uh, if you're going to a concert, and, and let, let's say if you're going to a big concert, then get whatever seat you want, okay? Um, get whatever seat you can afford. But if you're going to uh, a local concert by a local band or you're going to uh, a block party, uh, 
a picnic or something that's going to have a band at it, maybe don't sit in the audience. Maybe don't just go there to eat and enjoy the music. Maybe sit behind the uh, control board. Sit behind the soundboard engineer and glance over every once in a while and, you know, start to think about why is he uh, upping the volume of the vocals? Why is he... Uh, why is he doing certain things, you know? Ask yourself why he's doing what he's doing. Or she, I should say. Um, ask yourself, why is the lighting engineer deciding to use those spotlights instead of those? Why are they choosing these color patterns instead of others, you know? If it's a slow song, why are they choosing to use blue and green or purple rather than using red or orange? Um, which, uh, why are they choosing uh, blue instead of yellow? Because, well, blue is a sadder color than yellow, which is a happier color. Why are they choosing for this, um, you know, revenge song, red, instead of blue? Ask yourself these questions while you're sitting behind a control board, um, while you're sitting behind the person controlling the control board, and just observe them. And if they're really, really nice, you can even ask them during the show, um, maybe not during the show, but after the show or during intermission or something, ask them a couple questions. You know, ask maybe not ask them how they got into this career because that's a l probably going to be a long answer, but ask them, you know, w during this song, why did you choose to use blue? Why did you choose to up the vocals in that certain spot? You know, ask them these technical questions and try to learn as much as you possibly can. If you're a performer and you know that's what you want to do and you know for certain you've already tried doing all these other lighting and sound things and behind the scenes stage crew stuff and you don't like it, you like being a performer, first off, now you have the pre appreciation for those other positions. Um, so you're going to uh, hopefully not have as much of an ego as maybe other people do in the industry. But um, at, at, ask yourself, ask the performers, why did you choose to um, go out into the audience during this vocal part? Why did you choose to do this dance move? Whatever it happens to be, ask yourself and ask these other people these questions. Observe and ask. If they're nice, they'll answer and they'll give you as much information as they can. If they're mean and they have an ego, maybe not, but um, at least ask. It never hurts to ask. I know if you're at one of my shows um, or if you're at an event that I'm at, during the show, I'm probably not going to answer you, but if it's an intermission or if it's after the show, I will take the time and talk with you. Um, if you, uh, for kids that really are inspired to be in the industry, I will even meet with you and your parents, obviously. I will meet with you and, and to talk with you about certain things. I will answer your questions. That's what this show is for. So if you're a kid out there having questions on this, Ask questions to the show. Go to mhnews.info and submit using our question form on there. Um, you can also submit questions on Facebook or in the comment section below on YouTube. With all that said, though, I think the best piece of advice as part of this uh, kid's guide to getting started in the entertainment industry is don't ever assume that what you're doing on set or a part of a show or a part of a part of an event or anything don't ever assume your part isn't important but don't ever assume it's more important than anyone else anyone else's job because and I think that's why you should learn multiple positions doing whatever you're doing if you're an event part of the event world you should learn how to be a stage crew member, how to be a PA, um, how to run sound and lighting, how, how to do everything on set, on, on, on an event, because then you'll learn that everyone's job is important. And if it wasn't for that rigor, if it wasn't for that sound and lighting engineer, you wouldn't sound good as a performer. If you're in the film industry or uh, TV industry, Learn the graphics person's job, the instant replay's job. Learn the audio and director's job. Learn 
uh, the cameraman's job, learn the sound uh, assistant job, learn everything. Learn how to be a PA, learn how to run and get coffee for everyone on crew. The more you positions you have and the more positions you fill, first off, the more valuable you are later on. When you go to have a job one day, you can now say to them, you know, I know you're looking for a cameraman, but I also know how to use, uh, I, I also know how to do audio and lighting and how to do everything, you know? And so now, if you have two equal qualified candidates sitting on your desk and you have the, the two resumes right in front of you, and you're equally qualified to be a cameraman, but one has experience in audio and lighting and, you know, so on and so forth, and has worked every position on set, and the other one hasn't, suddenly now your decision's made as a, uh, uh, as a hiring uh, person. But, uh, human re resources, I should say, person. Uh, so, not only will it make you more valuable later to your employers, um, you might even get paid a little bit higher for that uh, as an hourly rate or something, but now you have an appreciation for everything else. So if you're an actor, you know, you know that if it wasn't for that cameraman, if it wasn't for that audio assistant, if it wasn't for the PA, if it wasn't for craft services, if it wasn't for everyone who has a part in making this film, I wouldn't look as good. If it wasn't for that editor who's going to edit edit out everything all my mistakes, I wouldn't look as good. If it wasn't for that colorist who's going to color all the footage and make it look all beautiful, you know, I would look pale. If it wasn't for uh you know, all these different if it wasn't for the um salesman who's going to distribute this everywhere, I wouldn't this film wouldn't sell, you know, or so on and so forth. If it wasn't for everyone on set or on location or on a on an event, the production wouldn't happen. And that's the truth in this industry. Never assume that your position isn't isn't important, but always assume that everyone else's position is more important than yours, no matter who you are on set, even if you're the director. Assume everyone else's position is more important than your own because then you'll appreciate every other, every other position a little more and rather than a director saying to you um rather than if you're a director rather than saying to someone you know do this or do that you suddenly now put a please in front of that uh that question and you suddenly put a um you suddenly can say to people an estimated time to do things of, you know, you don't just say to someone, um, you know, let's rig up a light here and then assume it's going to be done in a couple of seconds. But if you've worked that position before and you know how hard it is to rig up a light or something, then you can say to yourself, okay, yeah, that's going to take about 15 minutes, you know, to do. And you can have these assumptions of like, I'm going to give them a reasonable amount of time to do it before I start asking if it's done yet, you know? And so I think it's important for kids especially to learn everything, to try to do everything. And what I kind of, what I always try to do um, whenever I'm working in an event for a school or anything, I always want to have, especially in elementary school, high school, um, you know, if, if I'm hired to do something, then I'm hired to do it. But if it's an elementary school, um, for instance, we were hired back to our elementary school, um, back to my elementary school, that um, basically gave me the start in the industry that let me be a stage crew person for the show and really pushed me towards this industry. And so when I was hired back to do their talent shows and their Christmas programs, I said to them, I will do the show and, you know, here's what I charge. But I said to them, you need to give me a couple people to help me out. 
rather than me bringing my entire professional crew in and all this, let's have kids do it. Let's have kids help me on a soundboard. Let's have kids help me with the lighting. Let's have kids do the stage crew positions. And it, it was this situation where I got to help these kids learn a little bit more about the industry. Maybe they won't be stage crew members one day. Maybe they don't uh, really want to be audio and lighting engineers one day. But now they have a small appreciation for those positions and how hard they are, even on a smaller production like this. So now when they go to perform the next time, they're not going to say to the sound engineer in the middle of their performance, can I get a little more vocals on my monitor? They're going to, you know, wait until the end of the show, be professional about it, and then at the end of the show, mention it casually. So that way the next show, you know, the things are fixed a little bit, you know? What I'm saying is throw darts at the wall and see what you enjoy most. Try doing everything. And that's something that this little club, this little group decided to do this year. This one uh, little girl who I, I should call a little, uh, uh, I should call a woman chose, I don't want to act this year. I want to be a part of the crew and learn what that's like. And that's to be admired of a child to say, I don't want to do what everyone else is doing. I want to learn everything. That's to be admired. But it's also to be admired about the club and the group to say, yes, we're going to let you do that. Because we think that's honorable. We think that's just as credible be, to be wanting to learn this. And if you have a genuine want to learn, if you want to learn, there will always be people out there who want to help you along. And I, I said on the show many, many times, you can have the same number of years of experience in this industry, but you can still learn something from someone who has much less experience than you because they've had different experiences than you. If someone's in this industry for a year, they can still teach someone that's been in this industry 50 years something because they had dif different experiences. You've never been on the same set the same location, the same exact events as everyone else you're going to ever work with. So you can always learn from everyone. And that's something to take away too as a kid of try to learn from everyone. Um, the, the big piece of advice that everyone tries to give everyone is, you know, network like crazy. Try to remember everyone's name. If you go to some event, try to remember the name of the engineer, you know, uh, take a little notepad with you and write down their name and what company they're with. Um, and that way, one day you can say, well, I, I spoke with John over at this company. Or if you try to go for a job there one day, you can say, well, you know, a couple years ago, I was working with so-and-so here, you know, and, you know, we worked together pretty well. And now you have a reference. Now you have someone there that's a contact. So try to network, but at the same time, try to learn. Um it's more important the knowledge you have than it is the contacts you have sometimes. But it's also important to have contacts. Don't get me wrong. Networking is still an important part of this industry, but learning is the biggest part. So always try to learn from everyone and don't narrow that path too soon. But with all that said, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I hope it helps you get started in the industry. And if you're a kid out there who's saying to yourself, I want to learn more. I have a question about something that was talked about on the show here. Or I have a question on something specific. Then please do email us. Um, we have a website called www.mhnews.info. It's linked to in the description of today's video on YouTube. Um, or if you're watching this on Facebook, it's on our channel about section. Um, Go there. Go to the website. There's a whole forum that you can ask questions on. Um, you can also private message us on Facebook or comment below on Facebook. Comment below on YouTube here. There's multiple ways to get us your questions. 
I will certainly get back to you. If I don't know the answer, I will send it off to a team of experts that uh, all have connections to the show and are my good friends. They help out people every day. So if I don't know the answer, I will send it along to them. They might know more than I do in a certain specific topic or something like that. And they will get back to you or they will get back to me and I will forward their answer on to you. Or we will talk about it more on in depth in the show. If it's a if it's a really good question, I'm going to put it on the show later on in a Q&A section. So please, please send us your questions, okay? If you have any questions. If you don't have any questions, that's fine. But if you have questions, we're here to help. This is a resource for you to learn as much as you possibly can, as fast as you possibly can. And that is, I hope, the takeaway from this whole episode and this whole experience that you're not alone. There are people who are out there who are going to try to help as much as they can, lend you a hand and say, here, take my hand and I'm going to help. I'm going to pull you up, right? That's what the world needs to be today. We need to help each other out. When I first started, like I said, I found experts much later in the industry that tried to help me. I found people that were willing to help me but I found them quite late in the game. I found them years into my experiences, years after I started calling this a career. But when I first started, there was no one there. And so that's what this whole show is about. So please send us your questions if you have any. Let us know your comments or your suggestions. If you're an expert out there or if you're in the industry for a while, comment below or message us or put it on an the forums on on the website of here's another piece of advice that I would have for young kids just starting out because we're all in this industry together and I think we all realize we need each other we need cameramen in order to make the film look good we need not just actors we need uh, audio and lighting engineers and stage crew members and PAs and we need all these positions so throw darts at the wall see what you like most and who knows? You might like something you try more than you uh, than the thing you initially tried. So that is our show today. Thank you all for joining us, and see us next time here on VLAMP Video Lighting, Audio, Music, and Photography How-To Show. I'm, of course, your host, Matt Haslam. Goodbye.